Well, hello again, and welcome to the VK6CS Fun with Amateur Radio channel. Um, I was uh, thinking the other day, and it doesn't happen very often, so I thought I'd make the most of it, um, about uh, a couple of videos I'd seen the guys uh, on uh, a channel called Ham Radio Concepts were, uh, do were playing around with, uh, with an MFJ loop tuner. And they were using a very small loop, they used a wire loop, I think, and they used a bicycle wheel, and... Uh, yeah, I thought it was uh, I thought it was very good stuff, and they certainly appear to be getting very good results with it. They obviously love their amateur radio, those guys. And uh, if you haven't seen uh, the Ham Radio Concepts channel, go and uh, go and have a look at it because they got some uh, they got some good stuff on there. Um, anyway, uh, and I thought, well, that uh, I'd never really thought about tuning a, tuning a loop like that. Whenever I've thought about mag loops, I've thought about um, you know toroidal uh, toroidal feed arrangement or a you know, a small loop or a gamma match, and I never really thought about actually tuning a loop with a tuner. And um, I, uh, I had a quick look. I googled uh, MFJ. I am here. I'll just prove I'm here. Is it going to focus? I'm, I'm going to draw something in a minute. So uh, bear with me. Um, I googled the MFJ loop tuner, and then images and some images came up, and I, there was some pictures of the inside of it. Now they weren't terribly good pictures, but they were they they, they showed me what I needed to know, and that is that there was no inductors in there. It's just two capacitors. So I then googled loop tuner, and also this loop tuner and images brought up a thing called the the Army Loop Tuner, and the Army Loop Tuner was very very simple. And when I looked at the circuit diagram for the army loop tuner and I looked at the image of the MFJ loop tuner and I thought yeah this is this is what this thing is and the circuit diagram goes something like this now I've got a handle sticking out the back of the bloody camera here so I might knock the tripod um, and it goes something like RF goes in there like that goes through a variable capacitor like that then it goes off to a butterfly capacitor which then goes to the loop so the loop is connected like that actually make that just a little bit a little bit nicer the loop goes around like that and that goes to chassis like that and that is a butterfly capacitor and I thought well as I say that's the they're, they're the two points where you'd connect your loop so actually that's there we go like that and I thought well that's very very simple and it certainly seems you know when the when the ham radio concept guys were mucking around with their loop tuner it certainly seemed to be very effective and I thought uh, okay well I looked at the price of these things they're quite expensive so I thought hmm okay um, now, this is not a differential capacitor, it's a butterfly capacitor. Now, a butterfly capacitor will change the capacitance here and it will change the capacitance here sort of equally. So, a differential capacitor, if you increase the capacitance here, it decreases it here. But with this type of capacitor, with a butterfly cap, it will increase here, it will increase here. And similarly, if you decrease it here, it's decreasing here. Now, I don't have a butterfly cap, but a split stator capacitor is very similar um, and will work in the same way. Now the only disadvantage of using a split stator capacitor instead of a butterfly cap is unlike a butterfly cap with a split stator capacitor the RF current has to flow through the the shaft between the two sections of the capacitor and I'll show you a split stator capacitor in a minute so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay so that's the circuit diagram for uh, the SPC uh, for the uh, for the loop tuner, and with my usual finesse, I've forgotten to I've forgotten to dampen the uh, forgotten to dampen the cloth. So I hope this works. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, so that's the loop tuner. Just two capacitors, no inductors, and here is an SPC. Now an SPC is very much like a T-match. You've got the RF comes in like that, goes through a capacitor, goes through another capacitor, and out to the antenna. That's a variable capacitor, that's a variable capacitor, that's that 
variable inductor goes down to the ground there's another variable capacitor there like that and there's the output okay and that's a that's a variable inductor now <clears throat> as you can see this is very much like a T match um, simply because you've got an inductor the two capacitors that's what you get in a T match and this has got an extra capacitor now this is actually a split stator capacitor so both of these capacitors are on a single shaft so when you adjust that capacitor this capacitance increases and this capacitance increases similarly they both decrease um, just uh, just out of interest the the, um, the SPC type transmatch as the uh, as the Americans call it um, has this uh, extra capacitor here um, to get rid of to help get rid of frequencies other than the pass frequency so it sort of cleans the transmission up a little bit they're not quite as efficient as a T-match but you probably need laboratory equipment to tell the difference okay so that is what an SPC uh, sorry yeah that's what an SPC series parallel capacitance SPC transmatch looks like now I'll just show you very quickly uh, what an SPC transmatch looks like this is one I made some time ago and uh, actually what I want to show you is the um, is the split stator capacitor which is this thing here as you can see I hope you can see anyway there's a capacitor here which is in you've got there's basically two capacitors this one here and this one here and they're on the same shaft as I say this performs very very similarly to a butterfly capacitor so if I turn the capacitor as you can see the plates on both of the capacitors are turning this one here and this one here and you can see this plate here is swinging out of the plates so the capacitance is going down and similarly here down here this is uh, the uh, the moving part is swinging out of the fixed plates and that's reducing the capacitance there as well okay so that's a split stator capacitor it's two capacitors on one shaft so this will this will do the job that our butterfly cap will do may not do it quite as efficiently because as I say the uh, current is going to have to run through the uh, the shaft here whereas on a butterfly cap it doesn't because as you move the veins around on a butterfly cap you'd have the other capacitor would be below it and it would swing in and it would couple through the plate if you see what I mean rather than through the shaft okay so that's what uh, that's what a split stator capacitor looks like as you can see that one's got fairly decent spacing on it that'll take a fair amount of power I think um, this is these are Capco capacitors I think I rate it three kilowatts these ones um, okay let's get that out of the way so we go back to the go back to the uh, the circuit of the transmatch that's the SPC transmatch and it occurred to me that I could make a couple of changes to this transmatch and I could turn it into a loop tuner so by uh, what I need to do actually it would need to go there like that and then there like that and if I then went If I then had that so that that would go to, mm -hmm, how can I, easiest way to draw that would be like that. And that would be a switch. So that's showing it in the SPC, SPC position. And that would then come down here. and go across there there'd be no connection there and then that would go along here and it would go to uh, so this at the moment would have to go to 
that would go like that. Um, no, hang on, I'll get this right in a minute. <laughs> Uh, that would go, yeah, that would have to go like that. And there'd be another switch contact there, which that would then go to. And we'll show that again in the SPC position. And this one here would either go to there or ground actually i should have made this a bit bigger because it would have to go to it would have to go to ground so it would be in that position like uh, like that i'll show that in the spc position and that position there would go to chassis like that okay so if i make it all the switch positions one like that one and one and the other one two uh, two will be that one there and there then in position one it would be an spc and in position two it would be a loop tuner Because what you would have is you've got when so they would be three wafers on one switch. So you go position one, position two. So position one is configured as a standard SPC transmatch. And when you flick the switch to position two, all these would switch over. So the other side of that capacitor would be switched through to the end of that capacitor. Uh, the center point there will be switched to ground and you would end up with and you can see in, in position 2 the inductor is switched out entirely and this capacitor here will just come into be in series with this capacitor here <coughs> oh and I'd need to put another wire from there to another post so so a wire antenna would go here and here That'd be one, and the loop would go there. If you see what I mean. It'll probably look better if it was bigger, but I hope uh, I hope you can get the gist of that. So remember, with the loop tuner, the RF comes in, goes through a variable capacitor. Now, if it's switched into loop position. That would then go down here, round here, up here, along here, into this capacitor here. This is one side of the loop there, goes through one half of the split state of capacitor. Centre, once that switch is switched over, goes to ground, and the other side of the loop goes there. So what you end up with in position two is The good old army come MFJ loop chair. I'm looking around the camera here, but, uh, which looks like that. There's the two posts for the loop. And that's what you end up with with the uh, with the SPC ceramic switch with the three wafers on it, three three pole two way, three way two pole. <laughs> this is amateur radio after all. Uh, switch in position, in position two, the circuit diagram of the SPC transmatch would look like that. And then I could then, uh, as I say, just put the additional post on the back um, and uh, have it uh, so that uh, I could actually just put it put it uh, at the feed point of a loop and use it as a loop tuner, just as those guys were using on the picnic table uh, when they were doing their portable stuff, I could do the same thing. It's a bit of a big ATU, but um, um, you know, it's uh, it's there. It means I wouldn't have to buy anything else. 
and uh, I thought that might be a, uh, a nice cheap and cheerful way of getting a loop churner. All I have to, all I have to do is buy the um, uh, the uh, uh, three pole two way ceramic switch and there's a ham fest coming up so I might be able to pick one up cheap. Alright well I hope you found that uh, interesting or uh, if nothing else amusing. If you found it confusing let me know and uh, I'll see if I can unconfuse you. I might even unconfuse myself. As always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.